Hello and welcome to the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jackrabbits pregame special. We'll be hearing from USD coaches, players, and sports reporters about the upcoming Missouri Valley Football Conference game. We'll discuss what's made the difference between last season and this year, expectations for Saturday's game hosting SDSU, and how the in-state rivalry is changing. To start us off, we welcome USD head coach Joe Glenn and offensive coordinator Wesley Bashaner. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Cassie. Coach Glenn, this is your second season as head coach for USD. Last year, the team won only one game, and this year you far exceeded that with four wins so far. Where have you seen the most improvement with the team? I just think familiarity. Uh, we've learned, uh, they've learned what we want, and um, the coaches have stayed together. Um, we've improved our talent level. We've moved some different people around a little bit, and I think we've kind of hit the right tone. Uh, with our kids and got the right checkers and the right squares and the round pegs and the round holes and um, all of a sudden things are working pretty well. One of those changes has been a new starting quarterback. So Coach Bashaner, uh, Josh Vandermont started at quarterback the past couple of seasons and then earlier this season you made the switch to Kevin Earl. Uh, how big of a difference do you think that change has made with the team? Well, I think it was uh, a great change because Josh handled it so well. Um, you know, he was a team captain, two-year, two-time team captain um, as a sophomore and as a junior. So for him to come in and say, hey, I'll do whatever I can to help this football team, I think took a load off of a lot of other people. Um, and then Kevin came in and got all the reps, and when you see him get all the reps, uh, he can kind of flourish. And he's getting better. You get more comfortable in the situations that you're in um, by just going through practice every single day at that spot. And I think just having that guiding light for Josh or for Kevin, Josh being his guiding light, I think has been a lot of help for, for the whole team as, as a whole. Last year, the Jacks hosted USD and beat the Coyotes 31 to eight. Um, what did you learn from last year's game that's been helping you prepare for this season? Coach Glenn? I, you know what? Last year was last year. We really don't look back at that as a, a marking point. Uh, we looked at this season going forward with our team and where, how much better we've gotten to, through this season to this point, and um, we're very confident that we can take the field and improve on that 38 to one or 31 to eight score. Um, we're a much improved football team, and uh, I think we're at home. Uh, last year, I think we only played four games at home. Uh, we are now this will be our sixth home game, so uh, we'll see how it goes. But I know one thing: our our team is ready to go. Uh, we're playing hard. Uh, if we can get healthy, uh, this is going to be a terrific game. Zach Center is SDSU's strongest running back. He averages about 140 yards a game. How, have, how has the defense prepared to stop him? Well, you have to hit your gaps. I think everybody on defense, football might be a game where everybody thinks you just run to the ball and tackle the guy. It's really not true. Every guy that lines up on defense has a gap to fill. Not just the guys on the line, but the second guys behind them, the linebackers, and then even uh, the safeties and corners have a gap to fill a lot of times. So when you want to really shut down a runner like Zenner, uh, the linemen have to hit their gaps and fill it hard. Then the second wave, our three, four linebackers, they got to hit their gaps. And then a safety or two has to fill their gaps. And if everybody will get in their gap and hit it hard and be awake and be ready to play some football, he won't get 130 yards on us. <laughs> now, Coach Bashaner, uh, R.C. Kilgore leads SDSU on defense. So how have you prepared USD's receivers and running backs to get by him? Well, it starts with them up front. They're really good and really physical up front. They have some returners, um, a lot of talent up front. So that's what we've got to stop. We've got to stop their defensive line, getting pressure on our quarterback and pressure on our, our run game. That'll stop RC. Um, he's, a, he's a terrific player. He's very, he's very physical, very fast. Um, but that's kind of our whole motto. You know, we start from the front level, kind of like Coach Glenn was talking about on defense. We start front level first, work to second level, then you can go to third level. So I think our guys know that. Um, they, they've been doing a better job each game. You've seen it. Um, we're playing really well up front right now, and we feel like if we, if we continue to stay healthy and kind of beat them to the punch, uh, we got a chance at stopping RC and, and doing what we need to do to win the game. How do you think playing in a historical rivalry impacts the players' performances? Well, fortunately, we both had a chance uh, to play in uh, the Dome a lot. I think that's a big, big part of South Dakota football in the high schools here and everything else. And, and then having played against South Dakota State myself, uh, 
When I attended the University of South Dakota, we were the, the lowdown team in this rivalry. And uh, by the time uh, my class had gotten done and uh, I came back here to coach, uh, I got a, a little placard in my office that says we beat state five straight. So uh, we got, the, the tide has uh, gone back and forth over the years a lot. And we just got into the Missouri Valley Football Conference last year. They've been it now for maybe 10, 12 years. And uh, we've got some catching up to do, but we think, we're, we think we're after them with everything we got. Now, as you mentioned, you've played for USD, and so have you, Coach Bashaner. So how have you seen the rivalry change since you were players to now? Well, I think Wesley missed out on it. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I played, or I've been a part of it for three years, really, as a player. I redshirted, then we played against them two years, and then they moved up to Division One. We stayed Division II. Um, we did lose a rival uh, as, as a player. Not in so much recruiting. Um, there was always kind of that, that rivalry in recruiting and just in-state when you saw each other. But everybody would check their scores, and I'm sure they would check our scores. But it's back now. It really is. And, and our guys, you can feel it. You can sense it. Um, it's a special game to play in. You know, when I got here, I didn't know much about it. I'm from the state of Iowa, and, and I didn't know much about South Dakota football. But as soon as you play in that game or you see some players playing in that game, there's a lot of heart. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that come out, and, and we'll be jacked up. And the rest of the state should be jacked up because it's, it's fun. It's going to be in the dome where the state championships are played, and it'll be on the state championship weekend. That's pretty special. So uh, really looking forward to it. Even some SDSU fans are saying that the Jacks will be beat in the dome. What are your predictions for the outcome of Saturday's game? Well, I sure like those fans <laughs> that they got. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a hard-fought game. There's no doubt. And um, we're much better than we were a year ago. I think the Jacks are about as close to where they were a year ago, which was a playoff team. They've got to beat us probably to make the playoffs. So they've got a lot to play for. And we're trying to catch up. We're trying to you know, get caught up in this Missouri Valley Football Conference. So um, I think it's going to be a fist fight from the second the referee uh, blows the whistle till the gun goes off at the end of the game. It'll be doggy dog. How big of an impact do the Coyote Crazies and fans in the Dome need to have? Uh, a big impact. <laughs> it can get really loud in the Dome. Um, it needs to be really loud when they're on offense and quiet when South Dakota's on offense. So um, if we can get that accomplished, I think and I know that we got a good shot because we've played a lot of games in here uh, in the Dome since 2003, I want to say, or I think we've only lost maybe eight games at home. Um, and that's a credit to our fans. Um, anytime we have a big crowd, our kids can sense it. Defense plays on so much emotion. Coach talked about hitting your gaps. You can hit your gaps that much faster and that much quicker when you have somebody behind you. Um, and whether it's moms or dads or students, it doesn't matter. Uh, the offense, they get that, that sense of when you score a touchdown. Sometimes your quarterback's gonna be on his back and he doesn't know if it's a touchdown until he hears the crowd and hopefully he hears our crowd a lot. Well, thank you so much, Coach Glenn and Coach Bashaner for joining me. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. thank you, Cassie. Up next, we have USD quarterback Kevin Earl and linebacker Tyler Starr joining me on the CMC's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. This is Josh. And his good friend Caitlin. Josh is the perfect coyote. So how can you be a good coyote just like Josh? Well, follow these simple steps. A good coyote always helps a friend in need. Josh doesn't mind holding on to Caitlin's purse. Don't worry, Josh. It's not that embarrassing. A good coyote is also a gentleman. Don't worry, Caitlin. Josh has you covered for your snacks. Hope you have enough money, Josh. She looks hungry. A good coyote also cheers for the home team. So it's no surprise that Josh remembers the most important rule, never date someone from South Dakota State. Follow these steps like Josh, and you'll be a good coyote. Go you! Awesome because it's challenging, both mentally and physically. You gotta love climbing because even when you're not climbing, you get a great view. Climbing's great because I feel like Spider Man.
climbing is great. Even my nerd friends can do it. Climbing's awesome because there's always someone who has your back. Come to the rock wall and figure out why climbing's awesome for you. Welcome back to the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. I'm Cassie Bartlett. We're talking with USD coaches, players, and sports reporters about the upcoming Missouri Valley Football Conference game. Here with me now, USD starting quarterback Kevin Earle and linebacker Tyler Starr. Thanks so much for joining us. First, Kevin, earlier this season you were handed the reins as starting quarterback. Have you noticed a change in your play at all in the first couple games? Uh, it's definitely, you know, something that uh, takes some growing pains, but, you know, a lot of guys were, were backing me up and rallied together, uh, especially the defense, you know, really stepped it up those first couple games I was starting to, you know, help get my back. Have you made any significant changes in your style of play being in that game situation now? Uh, I mean, a little bit, I guess, but, you know, a lot of it just kind of comes naturally and you just kind of have to play how you play. And I try to you know, do that as best I can. Tyler, this is your senior season. Do you have any personal goals or milestones that you've been aiming to hit? Um, you know, first off, just get as many wins as we can. Uh, recently, I had a couple tough losses, but uh, definitely probably the biggest milestone this year is you know, Beat State. Uh, it's just kind of a game that's big time for USD. You're not only one of USD's top defensive players with 58 tackles and nine sacks this season, but you're also helping put the Yotes on the national map. How do you explain your success? Um, definitely, got a, credit goes out to my teammate and coaches. Uh, couldn't do it without any of those guys. Uh, um, they prepared us well. Um, like I said, we got athletes all over the field, and uh, coaches are doing a great job putting us in position to make plays. Now, Kevin, Chase Douglas leads SDSU in quarterback sacks. How have you and the offensive line been preparing to handle this pressure? Um, I mean, we prepare the same way like we do anybody. Uh, when they have a good player, you know, we're always going to watch out for them, know where they are. Every play is on the field. So uh, if we have to, you know, we're going to send some more people his way for protection and uh, try, to stop, try to contain them. Tyler, how do you plan to stop <laughs> Zach Zenner, who puts up almost 140 yards each game for the Jacks? I think it's um, it's huge to uh, you know obviously the run games are strength and uh, uh, we've had some issues with that lately but uh, you know, our defensive line is doing a really good job winning the line of scrimmage and uh, you know make them one one dimensional don't let them run the ball and um, you know attack them uh, you know blitz them blitz them as much as we can. What are your predictions for the outcome of Saturday's game, Kevin? Uh, I predict uh, a 12 round fight. Um, I think that you know every man this team is going to give every bit of energy they have. And uh, whoever comes out after 60 minutes is, is going to be bloodied up, but that's what we want. How much of an impact do you think the rivalry has on how the two teams play? Uh, huge, uh, immense impact. Uh, I think, you know, when you're in a game like that, there's just going to be energy flowing from the crowd to the players. It's going to be a pretty exciting atmosphere. As a senior, you obviously haven't played SDSU all four seasons, but how have you seen the rivalry change from going from not playing them to now playing them in the Missouri Valley Conference? Yeah, you, you hear stories about when they played back in the day and, you know, got a little wild. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit more controlled now, but uh, going to uh, SDSU last year, that was just a great, great atmosphere, being able to play outside. Uh, you know, it wasn't quite as loud, but uh, uh, I'm anticipating uh, a, lot of, a lot of fans to show up for both teams. and. Uh, uh, I don't know how Kevin's going to be able to communicate on the offensive side of the ball, all that screaming. Yeah, hopefully uh, the Dome knows how to <laughs> handle the sound and everything for that. Uh, this is your last home game then as a senior, Tyler. What does this game mean to you? Um, it's uh, always, you know, being able to finish your season, especially your senior season, in the Dome uh, with a win and no better way to do it than uh, being able to 
beat state. I mean, that's obviously would be huge just for this community, this school, and for me, obviously, personal goal. Do you have any favorite memories or one aspect of the team that you are going to miss the most next year? Uh, just being able to, the relationships I built with, uh, you know, guys that aren't here anymore, guys that just came in, and uh, uh, just, you know, the times we've had together, you know, the, the, anywhere from our uh, freshman jog to our um, just hanging out after the game and enjoying the game. Now, after the game on Saturday, what will be the first thing you do after you get out of the dome? Kevin? Uh, probably be the usual where I kind of head home and, and get together with my roommates. Uh, usually it feels a lot better after a win than a loss, so hopefully uh, we can go back and you know, have, have a good time. Are there any team superstitions or pregame rituals that you guys have that you kind of think alters your success or not? Kevin? Uh, not so much for me. Uh, Tyler, do you have any? Uh, no, not, not really. The team doesn't have a favorite song? Uh, play music loud and <laughs> get hyped to it, really. That's all we really do. Okay, well, thanks so much for joining me. That was USD quarterback Kevin Earl and linebacker Tyler Starr. Coming up, Volant sports editor Grant Boziaki and Coyote Radio sports commentator Nathan Poole. Stay tuned. On a disc, I don't have a spot. Give Prentice Park a shot. Welcome back. This is the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. I'm Cassie Bartlett. We've heard from USD head coach Joe Glenn and offensive coordinator Wesley Bashaner. We've also heard from two of the team's leaders, quarterback Kevin Earl and linebacker Tyler Starr. Now joining me are two sports reporters, Grant Boziaki with the Volant and Nathan Poole with Coyote Radio. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, Thank you, Cassie. Thank you. Grant, the Coyotes have won four games after only winning one last season. From a reporter's standpoint, how have the Coyotes looked to you this year? They've shown a lot of improvement. It's been fun to watch. Um, the continuity is clearly there. Coach, uh, Coach Glenn has got everyone believing that, you know, they can win. Last year there was a lot, a lot of close losses. This year there's been some more close losses, but, you know, the quarterback change, how we've gone to Earl, has been big for us and the defense is playing a lot better so they just it looks like they believe more on, on offense and defense so they're they're buying into his system and it's good it's fun to watch. Nathan what do you think has been the Yotes biggest improvement this year? Well you look at it and it seems like the offense is finally clicking on all cylinders uh, we tried out with Josh Vandermont earlier in the year and it just seemed like it didn't go anywhere but then when you have Kevin Earl in there who is a true pocket passer and can dissect the defense a lot better uh, he's He's really improved every single week 
uh, and he's had flawless games. And uh, you also got to uh, point out that the defense has really improved from last year. The secondary is one of the best in the Missouri Valley. Uh, and uh, Tyler Starr is playing up to a uh, national level. He's uh, one sack away from uh, getting the record here at USD, and uh, it's, it's, it's just been a, it's been a good season so far. What do you think are the strongest parts of USD's game, Nathan? Well, you look, uh, I'd probably have to say offense, just looking like at last year. Uh, we struggled on offense, uh, third down, um, was uh, very inefficient, uh, but this year uh, we've been moving the ball quite well and with the help of two uh, freshman running backs who are uh, really the same uh, type of uh, style that they play uh, with the running game. They're big, built, uh, built guys that can hit the hole pretty hard and actually can shut off tackles and uh, make defenders miss. Uh, and I really think the offense has improved um, dramatically from last season. The Coyotes seem to be putting up more points this season than they did last year. Do you think that's because of the quarterback change, or is there another area, Grant, that you think has also improved? Um, yeah, it's the season's kind of been a tale of two stories. At the beginning of the year, it was kind of you know the same old, where we couldn't really score. We were having trouble scoring, and the defense was really willing us to victory. And now, all of a sudden, it's kind of the opposite. The offense is kind of carrying us. The defense is having a little bit of trouble, but. Uh, yeah, the, the quarterback change has been big. Ever since Glenn, um, excuse me, Earl took over, we've been a lot better on offense. He's, you know, putting up big numbers through the air. And the, the two-headed monster that Nathan was talking about, the running back game, it's looking good. I mean, they were, they were dinged up last week, so I'm hoping they're uh, healthy. And kind of an X factor on offense recently has been Riley Donovan at receiver. He's come from nowhere, and he's been making big plays after big plays. Is there one area USD is weakened that you think SDSU will try and take advantage of on Saturday? Um, the, uh, the offensive line has picked up some penalties recently, some holdings, some false starts, and I know Coach Glenn gets after them on that. He, they need to get better at that. And, uh, you know, South Dakota State has a good defensive line, so offensively, the offensive line for USD is going to have to be top notch. We've obviously been talking a lot about the quarterback change. So playing in a big rivalry game, Nathan, what do you expect to see from Earl on Saturday since he is essentially a new quarterback for USD? Well, uh, I expect the same that we've seen out of him the last two weeks. Uh, flawless game. He's really controlling the ball well. Uh, giving, it, giving it to his receivers uh, really helps them uh, to get extra yards after the catch. Uh, and he's evading pressure when he needs to. Uh, he's really becoming mature in the pocket and also rolling out when he needs to, finding the open receiver, always keeping his eyes down the field. Uh, and, and really, you could, you could possibly see a three touchdown game out of Earl, uh, and he threw it 45 times last week. Uh, we're becoming more, uh, more of a, of a pass, passing team uh, rather than focusing on the running, but running is always key uh, to balance out your offense. So I, I do expect a, another great er, uh, game from Earl. Now, just because Josh Vandermotten isn't the starting quarterback, he still has been playing offense for USD and has been having some pretty big games for us. So, yeah. Grant, uh, how has Vandermotten been playing and how do you think he'll play on Saturday? Impressive. Um, coaches got to love that he, Mr. Versatile, you got to call him. I mean, last week with the running backs down, he stepped in at running back and, you know, he played quarterback at the beginning of the year playing receiver back-to-back -back weeks he has receiving touchdowns so he knows the offense and he has the athleticism to play a lot of different positions so he's looking good and he's even back there in some punt returns now so that's pretty cool um Banner Martin, you know I'm impressed with you haven't heard anything behind the scenes of him complaining getting benched and a receiver he looks like he uh I mean this year rest of this year and next year could be really good so that's exciting to be successful on Saturday, what players do you think will need to have standout game for USD? Um, it's the defense as a whole has to has to play well. I mean, Zach Zenner, SDSU's running back, leads the conference in rushing yards. We uh, we gave up a lot of yards to David Johnson, Northern Iowa, and he's second. And I think Zenner is even he's even better than David Johnson. So the defense as a whole, they're going to have to play their A game. It's going to be a uh, from the defensive line to the linebackers to the safeties, they're all going to have to cover their, cover their gaps because center, 
he's hit the big one a few times. So uh, we we've given up big plays. Last week we gave up you know a 71 yard receiving touchdown. That just can't happen. So it's going to be uh, the defense as a whole. USD lost last year to SDSU 31 to eight. What are your predictions for the outcome of Saturday's game, Nathan? Uh, a lot closer. We'll say that much. Uh, the the offense for USD is just clicking in all cylinders. Uh, the, the defense uh, has had a couple of struggles, but they're still the dominant defense that uh, makes USD alum proud and uh, happy to come to these games. Uh, and l looking at this, uh, Earl, if I, I would say if the keys to the game, if Earl plays a flawless game, the running game is there all day, uh, and we can stop. They're two best players possibly in Sumner and Zenner. We have a good shot at winning this game. Both of you have covered USD athletics for a few years. Have you noticed a change in the rivalry, whether it's in the way the teams play when they face each other or the fan involvement when it comes to the games? Um, the rivalry is strong as ever. I mean, the important thing is it's back here at the Dome this year. So, um, you know, the, I think the rest of campus, you hear from them, they're all excited. So it's uh, the players don't really admit it that, you know, it's a little bit bigger of a game, but everyone knows that it is a bigger game and uh, having it back at the Dome is huge. Nathan, what do you think about the rivalry? Yeah, I think it's really uh, come back uh, between USD SDSU, hearing all the good things uh, about this rivalry, how competitive they are. Uh, and being that it is in the Dome, uh, we are very good at the Dome. 44 and 10 since the start of the 2003 season. Uh, we are very dominant. We play a lot better in the Dome, and uh, that's what makes this rivalry so great because both teams are coming in uh, with some hot streaks, some you know on the other side, but they are still two dominant teams uh, waiting to get the ball rolling. All right, well, thanks so much, Nathan and Grant, for joining me. That's all for the Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. You heard from coaches Joe Glenn and Wesley Bashaner, quarterback Kevin Earl and linebacker Tyler Starr, plus sports reporters Grant Boziaki and Nathan Poole. USD hosts SDSU and Missouri Valley Football Conference action on Saturday. The game starts at 1 o'clock in the Dakota Dome. Thanks so much for watching. For the Cross Media Council, I'm Cassie Bartlett. Excuse me, ma'am, what is this? Obstacle course training. It's how we prepare our staff to get you the news first. Not bad. The Blonde, first to the news, first to you. The student's voice for 125 years. This is Josh and his good friend Caitlin. Josh is the perfect coyote. So how can you be a good coyote just like Josh? Well, follow these simple steps. A good coyote always helps a friend in need. Josh doesn't mind holding on to Caitlin's purse. Don't worry, Josh. It's not that embarrassing. A good coyote is also a gentleman. Don't worry, Caitlin. Josh has you covered for your snacks. Hope you have enough money, Josh. She looks hungry. A good coyote also cheers for the home team. So it's no surprise that Josh remembers the most important rule, never date someone from South Dakota State. Follow these steps like Josh and you'll be a good coyote. Go Yotes!